Hello and welcome to Mahara 2204, Search and Support. I'm Christina Höppner from the Mahara Project team at Catalyst IT here in Tefanganoi, Atara, Wellington, Aotearoa, New Zealand. And it is my absolute pleasure to be able to show you what uh, the team and also many, many community contributors have produced over the last six months in order to make Mahara 2204 available. Many of you have already been using Mahara for quite a while, so you probably know what our version numbers stand for. But just in case, um, the, the first number, 22, denotes the year in which this version of Mahara was released. So 22 stands for 2022. And the second number um, marks the month in which Mahara was released, 04 standing for April. And we always have two releases, one in April and one in October. So we have a 04 release and a 10 release. Then of course, there's a third number, um, a either dot zero, or point 0.1 and so on. And uh, these mark the minor point releases that we have um, when we either need to fix some critical things like we needed to do on Monday um, or when there are security releases and security fixes that need to be done. And every version of Mahara is supported for 18 months. So if you install Mahara 2204, you will receive security updates and high importance um, bug fixes for this version until October next year, until version 23.10 comes out. Now, a new version of Mahara would not be able to be released without the support of a lot of people and also a lot of organizations that contribute to the funding of new features and they either create new features themselves, fix bugs or commission to have bugs fixed and new features released. So we are always grateful to everybody who contributes to this version and also the organizations that make it possible to implement in particular larger uh, features into Mahara. And as you can see, we have a very good representation from here in uh, New Zealand and then also Europe and the North American continent. It's always fantastic to work with so many different organizations to find out what the requirements are, how portfolios help in those in all organizations, and then make those features available. And of course, as somebody living in um, Aotearoa, New Zealand, I completely annexed Australia, but of course we've also had contributions from there. Now the focus of this release, as the title of uh, this session already indicates, is search and support. And with that, I mean kind of implementing the new Elasticsearch functionality and also supporting portfolio creators through certain functionalities, um, be that administrative functionality. So for those of you who are always um, in the background working in the site or institution administration, but also those that the learners can see themselves. And so what I wanted to do in this session today is give you a quick overview of the highlights of this new release. There are definitely more features and um, available, but I thought the ones that I'm going to show you today are kind of the ones that are probably uh, most frequently looked at or required. And some of them, of course, had also been requested for a very long time. And so we are very glad that we could implement some of them now. And I'm having my slides different today. So the first thing that I wanted to talk about is the search. So Mahara has had um, the implementation of Elasticsearch for a very long time already, which allows us to do 
full text search around the site um, so that you can find content no matter where it is. And it also allows for using learning analytics in the reporting. Now, our version of Elasticsearch uh, or our implementation of Elasticsearch required either Elasticsearch 5 or 6. And if you have Elasticsearch installed, you can then configure that in your plugin administration via Elasticsearch. But unfortunately, these products are now out of date, um, out of support, and so we needed to upgrade. But it was not quite an upgrade to Elasticsearch 7, but for almost pretty much an entire rewrite of the Elasticsearch code that we use. Therefore, it really qualifies as a new feature. It was a massive effort um, on the development side. And what we were aiming for is feature parity, which means that what worked in Elasticsearch 5 and 6 should also work in Elasticsearch 7. If you do come across any issues, please let us know though. Now, even though we are kind of aiming for feature parity, uh, the developer of course also wanted to make some things better and easier, especially for those that need to configure Elasticsearch and work with it from that end. And so what you can see now is that there's a better way of displaying the status of the Elasticsearch cluster which is its complete own um, separate tool from Mahara, because in the past it was not really so easy to see where there might be a problem, thus making troubleshooting much more difficult. Now the cluster configuration is also in one of those collapsibles. I'm not going to show you that for security reasons so that you can't see um, where we are connecting to. And the other nice thing, which is most important probably for all of you here, is that if certain things haven't made it into the Elasticsearch index, so they haven't made it into the part of the database where things can be found again, then you can requeue the missing items individually according to their type, rather than needing to reset the entire index. So on a small demo site like this one here, where I have hardly any um, artifacts in, it doesn't really matter. But if you have a Mahara site that has hundreds of thousands of entries in the index, or maybe even millions, depending on how old your site is and how many people are using it, a lot will have accumulated in that index and it can take several hours, um, maybe even half a day or longer to actually re-index um, all of that. And that is where it's really handy to be able to requeue individual things. So much for the search. Um, some of you might be using it, others might not yet have explored it. If you don't know if you have Elasticsearch or not, one very easy way to find that out is to look at your search bar at the top of the screen. Because if it says search, nothing else, then you have the full text search enabled. If it says search for people, you only use the internal um, search through the database. So that's a very quick way to check if you can take advantage of um, the, the full text search or if you're restricted to finding people and searching for groups, portfolios and other content in a different way. Now we're coming to a feature that looks at the integration specifically between Moodle and Mahara. Dublin City University um, has funded the integration um, in order to be able to submit portfolios for, pla to, um, for plagiarism checking through the Our Original um, software. And Our Original is available as a Moodle plugin. And so what we do is we connect Mahara to Moodle using the Mahara Assignment Submission plugin. And then our original takes care of, or the our original plugin takes care of sending that portfolio off to be analyzed for similarities. Now, 
On the Mahara side, we needed to establish that connection between Mahara and Moodle so that when a student submits a portfolio via the Mahara assignment submission plugin, a call is made back to the Mahara site and says, okay, student has submitted this portfolio. We'd like to have an export of that portfolio. And then Mahara creates that export. And we call that export HTM Lite because the plagiarism checkers like our original, which formerly was known as Urkund, um, cannot process images or video or audio files and certain other files. So what we do is we strip all of those files that our original cannot process for text checking from the HTML export and only send the text along. That, of course, has um, a number of advantages. Namely, the export is much, much smaller because if you have a 500 megabyte video sitting in there, you are not sending that needlessly through the ether. That, of course, also means uh, the solution is saving energy and is supporting you in the sustainability goals that you might have because we are really only sending the things through that are needed. So when, once a student has submitted their portfolio into Moodle and the Quant has run and the Our Original plugin um, came into effect in order to process the portfolio, it will then show once it's finished its analysis of how much similarity there is between the content in the portfolio. And that means everything that you see on the page as well as say in text documents, presentation documents, PDFs and the like. And then if you have your our original configured, you can go into the analysis and view the results there. Now the if if you're all excited like like orally, um, at the moment the Changes to the Our Original plugin are not public yet. They will be open source, um, but they are not yet available. If you do want to get a hold of them, I can refer you to our colleagues in our UK office at Catalyst IT Europe, who made those changes to the plugin. And they can then tell you where things are at, when you might be able to get that functionality. Now here I'm in the our original um, analysis overview, can check my text matching out. And as you can see, I was pretty bad in being original because I copied text from a website um, that is now being marked as such. Good question around whether it also works with any other anti-plagiarism software like Turnitin. Not at the moment. However, um, if you'd like to have a conversation around that, please do get in touch. Um, because of course, now that we've laid the groundwork for the, um, the connection between Mahara and Moodle and then also connecting into the Our Original plugin, Ideally, then, of course, also implementing similar changes for the Turnitin plugin in Moodle um, should, will be easier because at least already the Mahara site is being taken care of. So that is certainly something that um, will be good to explore in the future. And sending portfolios through an anti-plagiarism checker has been a long-standing wish list item for some organizations because while we often think that portfolios are original and that it's the personal account of students uh, some students do misuse their trust and uh, might have then very similar portfolios or might even have copied something from another student so if your assessment portfolios need to go through a similarity check no matter um, what anybody else thinks, um, whether that um, should be done for portfolios or not. If it is a requirement of your organization, then this can be a functionality for you. At the moment, this 
functionality has been implemented specifically for Moodle because we are actually not connecting Mahara directly to the similarity checker. We are connecting to the Moodle functionality and then Moodle takes care of sending things on. And that allowed us to um, also have cost savings for implementing that functionality because we could uh, take uh, we could reuse existing functionality that was already available in the learning management system now let's come to um, a Mahara feature that can be useful if especially you're at a larger organization and you have the the, the luxury of having a help desk staff available that look into troubleshooting uh, portfolio questions for your students and staff. In this case, you might not want to give the institution administration permissions to everybody. Um, because then, of course, they can change institution settings, um, they can create or change institution portfolios and the like. And that is where Functionality comes in that we've developed uh, for Switch Portfolio in Switzerland, where you can give somebody now institution support administrator permissions. And that is kind of that intermediate role between staff and administrator. And what it does is that it allows the institution administrator to log in or to, to have all the staff permissions, but also to masquerade as the as a staff member or as a member of the a regular member in the institution. So now I'm that institution support administrator, James is the institution administrator there i do not have his username underlined because i'm not allowed to masquerade as him whereas for paula who's a regular learner in that organization i can see her settings page change a number of things that i'd like to change i could also give her the institution staff permissions, but I can't give her any permissions beyond that. Additionally, I can log in as her, but I cannot suspend or delete her account because that, those are functionalities that we've reserved for the um, full administrator permissions. So something really nice for for an administrator that deals with hotline questions or um, where you just need somebody to be able to log into another portfolio but not get too many elevated permissions. Of course, if you allowed that your staff can see reports, then the institution support administrator will also be able to see reports. So I see that um, someone is typing, so I'll just wait briefly so that I can answer the question. Okay, great to hear that that is a feature that uh, you look forward to using. Now I'm going to show you actually a bunch of features in one because they are conveniently all located in the same area. Now let's imagine you have set up a group and you wanted to create a template for your students to work with the portfolio completion functionality so that you see your pages you can say which pages need a sign off from the portfolio author and which ones need to be verified now up to this version of Mahara it was not possible for you to create a template in a group copy that into somebody's account and have that page already available that was only possible on the institution and site level so thanks to Griffiths College, you can now also have it in groups. And so when you copy that portfolio into another account, this page will come along. Now for another couple of features, let's go to a page that does not yet have this block. When I edit this page 
and I drag and drop, drop a block onto a page, you can now see that the block dragging background there is gray, which will make it easier to see where you can actually drop a block. So some usability improvements have also gotten into this release. Now I can select the uh, sign off block and decide whether a manager verification or supervisor verification is necessary. Finish that. And on top of that, because I'm having a template created, I go into the page settings and mark this page like the others also as a template. Now I'm ready to share and copy that portfolio into my group members accounts. And only regular group members will receive that portfolio, not uh, administrators or tutors if they are configured. So copy for existing group members, save, and then that portfolio will be copied. Now, if I go into the account of a member of this group, conveniently located on page two, uh, sorry, locked into the wrong account because that person already had it but then I deleted it and of course regular teachers won't be able to log into accounts that is only site or institution administrator permission or now also the one of the institution support administrator okay here I've got my student teaching portfolio the template that I've created it immediately comes with a portfolio completion page and we have the sign off and two pages also have the verification. Now, if I go to the collaboration page, I am not able to remove the sign off block or even to edit it. I can still move it around the page, but I cannot change its settings. And that is also a new feature because what we've seen um, with an organization that uses the portfolio completion functionality for all the portfolios that they have, that um, the, uh, their learners made changes to the sign of block, even though they shouldn't have needed to. And then there were lots and lots of support questions of why suddenly their portfolio completion wasn't going to 100%, even though they had completed all portfolios and um, signed them off. And that's why we implemented this change that when somebody copies a template, so a portfolio page that is marked as template, or if you mark a collection on the institution or site level as a template, then you won't see the edit button and you also won't see the delete button, no matter what your settings are for that page in regards to preventing the removal of blocks. Now you might say, well, but at some point I do want to copy this page and get rid of that sign of verification block because I want to add that page into a presentation portfolio maybe. Well, you can certainly do that because if you make a copy of your personal copy, let's just pick the page instead of the entire portfolio, then this copy is not linked to the original portfolio template anymore. And you do see the edit button and delete button and can make changes. So those functionalities are still there. And we've definitely seen that the port support requests had gone down tremendously after we implemented that feature on the site because it was just one of those things that um, people just changed um, exploring everything on the site and making sure that they made changes to it. All right, let's go back to the site administration for the remaining features that I want to show you. And the first one in there is 
smarter evidence. So lots of you, or some of you might be using smarter evidence instead of the portfolio completion or maybe even in conjunction. And it has always, or it, for, for a number of years now, it's been possible to um, edit and create a smart evidence framework directly here on the site so that you don't have to import it, write all the JSON code and then upload it. However, if you created your framework directly in Mahara, it was not possible for you to actually get it out of it and use it on another site or send it to a colleague of yours. And so what we've implemented for this version of Mahara is now that you have a download button and you can download any of your frameworks. Then you can give it to a colleague or you can also import it back into your Mahara instance if you made any sort of changes um, and then want to have it available again or somebody else made changes for you, then you can push it back up to your Mahara instance. So that'll hopefully make it much easier for you to create your frameworks in a comfortable Visivic interface through the, the sort of questionnaire that is there, um, yet also be able to share it with other organizations. If you're working in a context where you have multiple languages installed on your Mahara site, in the past you always needed to ask your server administrator to install a language for you. And if um, changes and updates were made to that, typos corrected and so on, then you again you needed to ask them to, to install the uh, language for you. Now all of that can be managed directly from the site administration. So you could select a language pack that um, has not yet been installed. Install that. It just takes a few seconds because it needs to download the files from, from our website where all those language packs or translations are stored. Then upload it to your server, extract the file, put everything into place. But now we also have Italian available for our translation. And here you see that all my languages are up to date. Um, if they were not up to date, you could select them all and click the update button so that you can very easily get um, changes in there without bugging anybody on the, um, on the server end of things. That's giving you more autonomy over uh, which languages and translations you'd like to use on the site. There's another huge feature that we implemented for Switch Portfolio, and that in, is in regards to moving organizations or moving people easily between organizations. So imagine you have a multi-tenanted Mahara instance and all of your learners are in one IDP, so in one identity provider. So everybody logs in through the same interface in order to authenticate on your Mahara instance. But everybody still belongs to their individual institution. Now, these days, um, people don't just necessarily study at one organization, but they might be studying at two organizations, or they might be a student in one organization and a staff member in another. If you don't have this feature and everybody is in that big IDP, then an administrator would need to add you manually to another organization or remove you from one, um, or you end up with two accounts in the end. And that kind of really gets messy quite quickly because if somebody wants to share a portfolio with you and they see five of you there, then of course there's the question, well, with whom shall I actually share the portfolio? 
So the functionality, and I can't really show that to you here directly because um, we don't have such a massive IDP available, um, but I'll show you kind of the, uh, the settings that will be of importance then when you might want to explore that. Um, are all located in the SAML authentication plugin. And you can use that um, to connect to Shibboleth, to SAML itself, to CAS, um, also to OpenID and uh, OpenID Connect and Microsoft Azure AD, as long as they all have a SAML bridge enabled. Then you can use this core plugin. Now, there are a new number of new fields available here in that uh, SAML configuration. It's getting much longer because um, over time we've added more fields that can be pulled in, more functionality or more institution changes also be made automatically, um, things being moved around so that we now have a much richer experience available in particular for larger organizations where the administrator otherwise would simply only be involved in moving people about instead of answering portfolio questions. And so all of these fields that, that have affiliation in them are related to that IDP, um, to that big IDP. Because what we can now do is when somebody logs into Mahara, they can log in with one login. And if any of that affiliation data comes along, automatically could um, other email addresses come along or they can also be added to a particular new institution and they could also receive staff or institution support admin or um, institution administrator permissions automatically. So there are lots of possibilities of automating a number of things through the authentication. The last feature I cannot show you online um, because again, that is an integration that requires a very specific setup in an organization. And this feature was sponsored by the University of St. Gallen, also in Switzerland. And it pertains to the possibility of uploading files via web services. So what does that mean? Typically, if a student wants to have a file in the uh, Mahara account, they go to their computer, upload it or upload it from their phone, place it into their files area. Now, the requirements for, for this project were that that is being automated. If the university uh, produces certificates or the like, that they are then being sent into the portfolio for long-term storage automatically so that the students, even after graduation, still have access to an online copy of their certificate in case they um, don't have it available on their computer anymore. And so what we developed was the, the web services that facilitate all of that work. And so the general workflow is that a student goes to the university system clicks a button that says, yes, I agree that my file or files can be sent to the Mahara site automatically. By clicking that button, they are logged into Mahara so that it can be ensured that they actually have an account if they don't yet already have one. And also a piece of information is added to the database saying, yes, this student can receive files from that organization. Um, and that, of course, is a security measure so that not any random person can try to misuse that web service, but uh, certain parameters need to be given. And then at some point, once the organization is ready to send a certificate, it sends that automatically via web service, get, it gets into the account of the student and they have it available. So that is something really neat as well to automate certain processes um, that otherwise would require students to perform actions that might not really be necessary because we can automate those things um, 
relatively easily, or the technologists would say everything is possible. Um, it does take time to create those web services and um, to make that functionality available, but it is certainly something that supports organizations, especially on the larger scale, who need to do that a lot of times and reduce friction and also the necessity for that technical support then in order to do that. So those were all the features that I wanted to highlight in this session. Um, there are a number of more new features and also fixes available in Mahara 2204. So please do check them out. Uh, there is also a shorter feature video if you want to catch up on um, the things that I talked about today. If you don't want to watch this entire recording again or send it to a colleague, but just have something small. You find the links to that in the shared notes. The Mahara manual um, is also updated with these new features and the changes that we have implemented in Mahara 2204 so that you can refer to that. And if you have your in Mahara instance hosted on your own and haven't yet upgraded like one of you already here in the room, then please um, download the software, put it on your testing server, Give it a go there and then make it available to everybody. Now, if you have any questions, please um, do feel free to take the next few minutes and stick around so that we uh, that I can answer them. And those can be questions around the new features. I'd be especially interested in knowing which ones are most attractive to you that you're very much looking forward to testing immediately. Um, but if you have to leave um, or if something else uh, comes to your mind later on, please do feel free to send me an email and we can stay in touch. And also please do use the community forums at mahara.org.forums in order to engage with the rest of the community, have your questions answered and um, engage with others. The forums are our main place where we provide free support and um, where you can get in touch with us. Thank you so much.